to the channel. I'm about to break down this nine game MLB DFS slate on DraftKings and FanDuel. Before we get into it, if you do enjoy the content at any point in this video, if you could please leave a like on this video, subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell. That would be greatly appreciated. That way you don't miss any new content when I upload it. And hitting that like button really does go a long way for me. It takes one second. It's free. Really helps me out with the YouTube algorithm. I put a lot of effort into these videos. It's the least you could do to give back to me, and I do greatly appreciate it. If you are interested in some further content from me, I do offer a premium MLB package. You get access to all the same tools that I use when building my own DFS lineups. That's linked below in the description. Use it for other things as well, such as just research overall for fantasy season long. I've had other people use that package for different other fantasy sports reasons, fantasy baseball reasons. And with that being said, excited to announce my new partnership with Price Picks Fantasy. Use promo code KJKDFS to receive a 100% match up to $100 when you deposit today. Go ahead and use my referral link, link below in the description. Join Price Picks today. Quick little breakdown of what they have to offer. Really excited about the format and to be partnering with these guys. It's a different dynamic than a DraftKings and FanDuel setup. What you do is you pick two, three, four, or five players, predict if they go over under their projected fantasy score. You can also do single stat DFS as well. And as I pick along player shield, you'll see on the right side, it explains these rules to me. Five correct picks, I get 10x my entry. Four correct picks, I get 2x my entries. Three correct picks, I get 0.4x my entry if I go with the five. And based upon your risk tolerance, if you want to limit it down to just maybe two picks, you can do two correct picks, you get 2x your entry. One correct pick, you get half your entry back. And then you can do three. You get to just three correct picks, you get 2.25x your entry. Two correct picks, you get 1.25x your entry. So you have room for error as far as getting one wrong. You get two of the right, you get some money back. Obviously, the goal is to get all of them right. But, you know, you're not playing against all these sharks and guys that are entering 150 lineups per day. And I know everyone has different um, interests as far as that's concerned. Some guys really want to compete with those sharks, be one of the top. Some guys are like, ah, I don't really like this. I don't have as much time. I got a lot of stuff going on in my life, which I understand. I think Price Picks is a great alternative if that is you. Go ahead and check it out. Use promo code KJKDFS today. Receive that 100% deposit match up to $100. And with that being said, let's go ahead and start breaking down this slate today. As always, don't forget to stay tuned to the end of the video for my home run call of the day. And let's get into it. All right, so I'd like to go ahead and sort my sheet by K rate. As always, it's fantasy sports. We get points for strikeouts. Figure out the top pitchers we want to play on the slate today, and then we'll get into bats. Brandon Woodruff comes up with a 30.2% K rate overall, 29.7% K rate against righties, and a 30.6% K rate against lefties. Very good ground ball, fly ball stuff across the board against both hitterness of hitters as well. And we're looking at his opponent today, taking on the New York Mets. They have a 3.39 implied run total. He's pitching in New York at City Field, which is a great pitching environment. Pulling up the diagram that I always like to show you guys here as far as the color coded chart here. A lot of red going on in City Field, so love to target this stadium as far as pitchers are concerned and i think i'm definitely going to love brandon woodruff today tops the slate and k rate by a pretty pretty wide margin second on the list is the guy in the same game tyler nagel we're only dealing with a nine innings pitch sample size but he does have a 30 percent k rate overall 36.4 percent k rate against righties it dips down to a 22.2 percent k rate against lefties and has been much more effective against right-handed hitting so far as far as his price tag over here on DraftKings, we can see that they have him priced at 7-2. Looking at his most recent performance, he got up to 85 pitches, 3 earned runs, 8 Ks against that Atlanta Braves squad. That's pretty impressive against that Atlanta Braves squad that is very good up and down. So um, I think this kid might be the real deal. We're definitely going to keep an eye on his stuff as we continue to go along here. And he's taking on a Milwaukee squad that's been striking out a ton. So... It's definitely an intriguing matchup. He's only 6-2 on FanDuel as well. That's a nice friendly discount. I think that he could be definitely an interesting option today. So, um, yeah, everything kind of matches up for him. Joe Musgrove taking on the Washington Nationals. 25.7% K overall, a 12.8 swing and strike rate. 27.2% K rate against righties and a 24.3% K rate against lefties. Also a guy that is very good across the board. He's taking on a Washington Nationals team today that is dealing with their fair share of injuries. Not quite as loaded of a lineup as we've seen them have in the past. They don't have to worry about Trey Turner at the top. Kyle Schwarber went down, one of the hottest hitters in baseball. And for that reason, I think Joe Musgrove is going to be a tremendous option today. I would expect that he's going to get plenty of run support from the San Diego Padres offense. No Vegas lines out quite yet, but you know, expected to get the win, which of course we always do prefer in our daily fantasy sports lineups. And he's priced at 8-7 on DraftKings. Over on FanDuel, he's priced at 9.6. So I think he's going to be a great option for you today on this slate as well. Rich Hill taking on the Cleveland Indians, another team that doesn't scare us all too much. 
I don't really like playing Richel all that much. He has been very good as of late outside of, I think, his last start. He got blown up pretty badly. 9-1, um, let's see, last time out. Four and runs against Washington. Not terrible, I suppose. Only two strikeouts, though. Uh, 82 pitches. If you want to go here, you can. I don't really like playing Richel all that much. 25.1% carry overall, 25.2% carry against righties, and a 24.5% carry against lefties. He is taking on a Cleveland Indian squad today. It doesn't scare me all too much, and he is in Tampa, which is also a tremendous ballpark, pulling up the uh, diagram here for pitching as far as the Tampa Bay Rays are concerned, and the Trop, Trop can a field. A lot of red going on and a lot of uh, good stuff when it comes to targeting pitchers here. So if you want to go to Rich Hill, um, I would not call you crazy for sure. So, uh, But i got to be honest, he's not really at the top of my list is the bottom line. Uh, Bailey over ticket on the Chicago White Sox, a 24.5% carry overall, 29.6% carried against righties, and a 19.2% carried against lefties. Has really, really struggled against left-hand hitting. Has been very good against right-handed hitting. And I do think that the Chicago White Sox have enough lefties that they could even give him some issues. And then when looking at the totals in this game, they have a 5.12 implied road total. Um, and the Minnesota Twins have a 4.88 implied run total. So not thinking I'm going to have too much interest in targeting pitching in this one. If I do, it will be targeting Dylan Cease. He has 24.4% carry overall, 27.2% carry against righties, at 22.1% carry against lefties. He is a lot better against righties, and just overall, this Minnesota squad does have their fair share of strikeouts in their lineup, and it should be a bit of a ballpark upgrade for Dylan Cease in this one because Minnesota, not the worst <coughs> uh, pitching ballpark in the world. It does look like there's going to be some pretty good hitting with it, though. 96 degrees with 6 mile an hour winds blowing out to right center. Uh, could be some issues for our pitchers in this one. So not exactly my favorite option. I'd much rather go to a guy like a Max Freed to get on the Pittsburgh Pirates today. 23.9% carry overall. Ground ball slot, fly ball stuff's very good. A 23.2% carry against righties and a 26.4% carry against lefties. Taking on a Pittsburgh squad today. That really doesn't scare us all too much whatsoever. It's in Pittsburgh, which is a great pitching ballpark compared to Atlanta. Another pitching ballpark upgrade as we're talking about all these guys here. Seems to be a trend, but it's just the truth. He comes in at 9-1 on FanDuel over on DraftKings. They have him priced here at 8-5. And he's been um, slowly but surely working his pitch count back up since returning um, off the injury list. So uh, you like to see that. I think he's going to be back up more towards the 90 pitch mark or so. And... For that reason, definitely going to have interest in him. And once we get past Max Free, things start to get quite uh, limited as far as my interest in pitching, to be honest. Not really looking to go to anyone else on the slate today. Really looking to focus on this top tier for sure. I would say the next guy you're looking to could possibly be either Mike Miner or Colby Allard. Uh, both in pretty good matchups here. Both have decent carry stuff. Mike Miner taking on Cincinnati. You could definitely take advantage of targeting him today. I think that the same rule could apply for the Cincinnati bats, bats, though. He does give up quite a bit of hard contact at times. And it is a great hitting weather there. And then Colby Howard is strictly a matchup thing. Take on a Detroit Tigers team that really does strike out a lot. They only have a 4.1 implied run total. Colby Howard is priced at 8K on FanDuel over on DraftKings. They have him priced at 7.9. And if you're looking at his most recent performances, nothing really too crazy. But he has been right around 5-6 strikeouts. Uh, per game, and he's taking on a team that, that should inflate even more. So uh, I tend to think that Kobe Allard is definitely going to be a valid play today, and that's really where things stop for me. Um, with that being said, let's go ahead and transition over to bats. As always, I like to go ahead and short my, sort my sheet by Sierra, skill and our active ERA. It's a good way of determining how good a pitcher's been so far in his career and how good he's expected to be in the future. And the top guy to target today is going to be Logan Allen taking on the Tampa Bay Rays. Ground ball fly ball stuff is respectable. However, when looking at the slugging against both sides of the plate, it's not good. A 553 slugging given up to righties. A 571 slugging given up to lefties. Not going to quite get the job done. And when breaking down the Tampa Bay Rays lineup, they definitely do have quite a bit of talent up and down it. The only problem is it's in the trop, as mentioned, not the best hitting environment. Logan Allen is a left-handed pitcher as well. The Tampa Bay Rays have really struggled against left-handed pitching this year, so... Not getting quite as excited as you would tend to think against the guy with the worst Sierra on the slate, but they're definitely a good stack. Manuel Margot, Randy Rosarino, Wander Franco, Yandy Diaz, Austin Meadows, Mike Zunino. My favorite guys would definitely have to be Mike Zunino, Mike Rousseau, Wander Franco, Yandy Diaz. Pretty much all the righties, or Rosarino, Manuel Margot. Uh, the right-handed hitters are really, really going to want to focus on this one. 
And as mentioned, unfortunately, it's not. I'm not too too excited because of the ground ball, fly ball stuff. But uh, they could definitely hit around and, and get to this guy and get to the bullpen and then have a, a big game. So like the stack. Tampa Bay, uh, after them, it's going to be Texas taking on Willie Peralta. Ground ball, fly ball stuff is pretty respectable. Once again, gives up a 310 slugging to righties. However, the ground ball, fly ball stuff is terrible, and the slugging is terrible against lefties. Very, very bad. A 659 slugging given up. Ground ball, fly ball stuff, just not going to get the job done. Uh, scary bad against lefties, and Texas definitely has a lefty that I'm going to have a lot of interest in today in a guy like Joey Gallo in the four spot. Tons of power. Taking on a guy, like, when you're looking at these numbers, I mean, he doesn't strike anyone out. He doesn't give up any ground balls, and he gets a bunch of slugging. So I think a guy like Joey Gallo, where we really only concern about his strikeout rate, this is the spot to be targeting him. Um, and then, of course, Jonah Hine, Nate Lowe, David Dahl, uh, and Brock Holt. Pretty much any lefty that cracks this lineup. The righties, you can definitely use to round out your stacks. It's not like he's tremendous against righties, but he's definitely a lot better against righties than he is lefties, so... Vladimir Gutierrez taking on the Kansas City Royals. Ground ball, fly ball stuff's been terrible. The hard contact stuff's been terrible against righty specifically. A 545 slug given up. Ground ball, fly ball stuff not going to get the job done. Against lefties, it does get a lot better as far as Woba and slugging is concerned. And luckily for us, the Kansas City Royals do have a very right-handed heavy lineup. So they're going to be a great one to be targeting today. Guys like Whit Merrifield, Salvador Perez, Jorge Soler, Hunter Dozier, Michael Taylor, like all of them. You can throw the lefties in the run out your stack with guys like Andrew Benatini, Carlos Santana for sure. But I do greatly prefer targeting the righties in this matchup today. So really targeting, the, stacking up those Kansas City Royals righties. Zach Davies taking on the Philadelphia Phillies. Ground ball, fly ball stuff really isn't the greatest overall. He gives up a 4 on one slugging to righties, a 380 slugging to lefties. He actually is a lot better against left handed hitting than he is righties. So once again, we've got a reverse splitsy guy. And it looks like it's going to be very windy in Chicago tonight in Wrigley Field. 14 mile an hour winds blowing straight out to center, 88 degrees. And if you're new to the channel, I will give you a heads up. I've said this many times in the past, but Chicago Cubs Field, Wrigley Field, is the most wind sensitive ballpark in the league. So if the wind's blowing in, it's very significant. If the wind's blowing out, it's very significant. And the rule of thumb, if it's 10 mile an hour winds or more, it's definitely significant. And we're dealing with 14 mile an hour winds. So, uh, this is going to be a tremendous spot for hitting in Wrigley Field today. Zach Davies, Matt Moore uh, listed as the starters. It looks like that is a bit of a conflicting report. Uh, actually, no, no, it's not. I have Matt Moore. I'm sorry. I apologize. Take that back. I misspoke there. Uh, but Zach Davies, yeah, really going to want to target the uh, Cubs, I mean, the Philadelphia Phillies righties. And overall, just really want to target anyone in this game because of the fact that the wind's blowing out as much as it is. I mean... This is going to be a great spot to be targeting these guys. So, um, Odubo Herrera, Gene Seguero, JT Ramuto, Bryce Harper, Andrew McCutcheon, Reese Hoskins. Love all of them. And I guess while we're talking about this game, we can go ahead and just talk about Matt Moore real quick. He's a guy that's left-handed pitcher. Really less than impressive stuff uh, against right-handed hitting specifically. Ground ball, fly ball stuff. Slugging is really bad. A 446 slugging given up. So, we're definitely going to like the Chicago Cubs righties as well. Wilson Contreras, Chris Bryant, Javi Baez, Patrick Windham, Nico Horner, Jake Marisnik, Ian Happ. I mean, this is going to be a ridiculously good hitting environment game, and you've got to take advantage. So, I definitely like those guys. Chase DeJong, we, skitched, we skipped over taking on the Atlanta Braves. He has been terrible. Ground ball, fly ball stuff's terrible. Hard contact stuff, terrible. He gives up a 618 slugging to righties and a 547 slugging to lefties. Scary bad numbers. Taking on an Atlanta Braves team today that is very good. Um, you gotta like this. You gotta like this spot for these Atlanta Braves. Ronald Acuna, Freddie Freeman, Ozzy Albies, Austin Riley, Dansby Swanson, Heredia, Almonte, Kevin Smith. Like all these guys today for sure. And uh, definitely going to want to be taking advantage. And I'll definitely like the Atlanta Braves stack today. Martin Perez taking on the Los Angeles Angels. He's another guy that is a left-handed hitter that really struggles against right-handed hitting. A 452 slugging given up. Ground ball, fly ball stuff really all isn't the greatest. Uh, so definitely have no interest. I mean, I'm sorry, no issues with you targeting Martin Perez with Los Angeles Angels right-handed power. I'm not getting as excited to play a guy like Shohei Otani, lefty on lefty. I do have a lot more interest in Anthony Rodone, David Fletcher, Phil Gosselin, Max Stassi, Jose Iglesias, Taylor Ward. All those righties that can slug off those left-handed pitchers. I'm going to like them. And the same was going to apply for Jose Suarez. He's even worse against righties. Even worse overall. Honestly, ground ball, fly ball stuff isn't good. The hard contact stuff isn't good. 
Um, would love to target some Red Sox bats against him. Both sides of the plate, to be honest, today. Enrique Hernandez, J.D. Martinez, Xander Bogarts. Uh, Alex Verdugo just really isn't that great against lefties. I like Rafael Devers still in the five hole. Hunter Renfro, Christian Vasquez, Bobby Dalback, Danny Santana. Uh, another great hitting spot, honestly. So I like those guys. Kobe Aller taking on Detroit. I'm really not interested in targeting Detroit. I mentioned their issues and their struggles, and I don't really like it. Matt Moore, I mentioned targeting the Cubs for sure. John Lester, definitely going to like the Padres here. Ground ball, fly ball stuff is not good. Hard contact stuff is not good. Against lefties, he is very good, but against righties, he's very bad. A 491 slug, giving up 353 Woba. Not going to get the job done. Only an 18.6% K rate. And the San Diego Padres righties are all going to be playing here. Tommy Pham, Fernando Tatis, Manny Machado, Will Myers. Like all those guys a lot in this spot against John Lester. And then once we get down past John Lester, things start to get not quite as interesting, to be honest. I mean, we're not really seeing anyone that we're too interested in targeting. We definitely have two guys with splits issues that we already talked about. Uh, Bailey Over taking on these lefties in Chicago. And then you got Tyler Mangle taking on the lefties in Milwaukee. I mean, he's only dealing with a 9 pitch sample size, and he's had really good case stuff. So I think that's a lot less uh, reliable than the 24 inning pitch sample size we're dealing with Bailey Over. Um, he's just been very dreadful against lefties, so the Chicago White Sox lefties are definitely a spot I'd be looking to today. And not to mention the Minnesota bullpen is terrible. So if you can get Bailey over out of the game, get to the Minnesota bullpen, you're going to be looking real good in your stacks. And uh, definitely like this Chicago White Sox. And you got Yo Moncada, Yasmani Grandal, Brian Goodwin, Andrew Vaughn, Gavin Sheets, Larry Garcia. I mean, I really do like the lefties. But of course, when you have elite bats like Tim Anderson and Jose Abreu with the right-handed side of the plate, um, don't be afraid to leave them out of your stacks. It's not like Bailey Over is tremendously good against righties. And uh, as mentioned, if they can get to the bullpen, um, going to be in a great spot today. So definitely like the Chicago White Sox. Great hitting weather, 96 degrees, 6 mile an hour winds blowing out. And with that being said, that is my overall breakdown of the slate today. Before I let you guys go, i got to give you my home run call of the day. Let's get into it. And my home run call of the day today is going to be Joey Gallo taking on Willie Peralta. We had discussed his issues against left-handed hitting. Absolutely terrible numbers against lefties. A 659 slugging, giving up 42.1% hard contact rate, 418 Woba, 44.7% fly ball rate, and only a 13.6% K rate. Does not strike any of those lefties out. It's really the only issue we're dealing with when it comes to Joey Gallup is the strikeout rate. And then when you factor in that Willie Peralta is very reliant on the sinking fastball, Joey Gallo crushes that pitch. A 256 ISO with a 352 Woba. Not going to pan out well for Willie Peralta in this spot. Love Joey Gallo. Great hitting ballpark in Texas tonight, and I think he's going to do some damage. Get him in your lineups because he is my home run all of the day. So there you have it, guys. Joey Gallo. Get him in your lineups, and that is all from me in this one. If you did enjoy the content, if you can please leave a like on this video, subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell. That way you don't miss any new content that I upload. That would be greatly appreciated. Wish you guys all the best of luck tonight, and we will see you in the next one.